Welcome to Earth, population 7.6 billion, about. And uh, you're all included in that, so this will mostly be me talking, but a little bit of interaction with you because you're part of that 7.6 billion and I need some information from you too. So first, writing systems of the world. That's simple enough. This is the world we're talking about, Earth. Here we are. But I should specify in this case, uh, in the digital age, because that's what we're really concerned with today, how the writing systems of the world are represented in computing. And as you all know, as you use computers and phones today, it works fine for probably most of us, for all of us, for most of our scripts. But a lot of the writing systems of the world have a lot of problems. And that's what I want to talk about today. So what the box, 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 box is going on. <laughs> if you don't know what this is, then I'm not sure where you've been with type because this shows up quite a bit, especially if you're designing type. You'll see it, well, I saw it earlier in the future fonts logo. It's right there, the not deaf glyph in a font, which tells you I can't display this information, I don't have this information. But to me, if I'm trying to look at a website that's in a different language, maybe, and I see this, it's, well, I don't have the letters. Don't you have the letters? I thought they were in here. This is, I paid $3,000 for this laptop, and you're telling me the letters aren't in here? <laughs> Come on. So part of this joke, of course, you can substitute your own four-letter word, but it's really not about the word. It's about the lack of information here. And I, I look at this a lot, and I wonder about the state of technology today. We have amazing technology. We can shoot rockets into space. Super cool. We can shoot a car into space. Maybe not so uh, useful, but definitely impressive. The technology, the thought that goes into this, the money, the hardware, the software, everything leading up to being able to do something like this is impressive. We can build robots that build cars, that drive us. Well, not quite yet with the self-driving cars, but you see, something like this is quite impressive. We can build amazing buildings like this, way taller, way more impressive than, I don't know, centuries before, and they keep getting taller and taller and more crazy. On the other side of the size spectrum, we have computing like this. So much computing power packed into a small logic board like this. This is just like this laptop here, a MacBook Pro motherboard. Your phones have something even smaller, also incredibly powerful. So we have all this power. We have all this technology, all these crazy ideas. Yet I go to Twitter and I get boxes. And I have to think, well, why, why do I have boxes? In this case, I have the font because we made the font. So why is it not showing up? That's a software issue. In this case, it shows up. I go to another device. On this device, OK, it's mangled. You can see on the left there, it's letters are overlapping. Well, is that close enough? I don't know. Is that better than boxes? Not really. I don't think that's a decision that we need to make. We shouldn't have either one of these. So before we look at some of these issues, uh, I think we should look at some of the writing systems of the world. Let's see if this works. So this is going to go kind of fast, but just check it out. If you see something you love, yell out. So a script does not exist alone. It's not something that we just see. It's not art or abstract art. In Paul's talk earlier this morning, he mentioned the Eric Gill quote, that letters are not things, they're, pict or they're not pictures of things, they're things, right? But I think it's a lot more than that. 
Letters are an extension of humans. It's a living, breathing extension of humans. Even a lot of these scripts you're seeing right now, they're dead. They've been dead. They're ancient scripts, historic scripts, but here they are. So are they dead? They're still here. We're looking at them. We're still talking about them. We're still encoding them in Unicode. We're still looking for more information. There are historians always searching, searching for more. So I think they're just as much alive as other scripts. But a script happens for a reason. Maybe not always the same reason or the same goal, but they don't just pop into existence out of nowhere. It's kind of strange to think about because we're all born into a specific script, or in some cases, maybe more than one. I know a lot of people here were born into different writing systems, such as Armenian, Arabic, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Thai, Hebrew, did I miss anybody? Cyrillic? Anybody else? Okay. There's a lot more than that, though, as you can see right now. But I assume a lot of us here were born into the Latin script. We grow up learning it, using it, we're surrounded by it. It's not much reason for us to think about, oh, where did this come from or why? Of course, at a type convention like this, it's, uh, we're all into type. We're all into the history of type and where it came from. But we can't really know for sure where it all came from. We have theories about how writing came to be as a tool of administration, accounting, religious purposes, but we don't have 100% accurate, real answers. We don't really know. But in any case, for many of the 7.6 billion people on, in the world, the script is, is tied to their identity. A lot of people, especially minority peoples, a script for them is much more than just a tool to write with and communicate with. It's, real, it's a real huge part of their identity, which I think just saying that might not be uh, the most impressive. We should give uh, an example. So you'll see in a minute some images from both Chakma and Nawari, which are scripts from parts of Bangladesh and Nepal. But I've been in touch with two people from both of these communities. For them, this is very important to them. Bevudi, who is a Chakma person, part of a minority group that existed before the area became Bangladesh. They speak Chakma, but for years they've been forced to use and learn Bengali script. And this is a story that's repeated again and again throughout history all over the world. Of course, it's in the interest of the colonizers, the conquerors, the majority people to suppress or erase the identity of the minority peoples. But getting into those topics is a little out of the scope of this presentation, but I think it's very important to consider when we look at the current state of world scripts and how they're represented in computing. So for someone like Bivudi, Chakma, Chakma script and Chakma language is important to him. It's part of his identity, and if he can't use it on the computer, then he's, he doesn't feel like he can be you know, fully himself in this world today. Being able to use it is a way to affirm a cultural identity, to connect to his own history. So, is that it with the scripts? Did anybody count how many we saw? A lot. So that was 143 scripts. Or, well, I left one out, but did anybody notice which one? Latin. Yeah, I'm not so interested in Latin script. But you saw that on all 143 slides, because that was the title I put for each script. And those names also were the Unicode names, which aren't always the best names ever, but that's one way to identify those scripts. So there's also another 120 or so waiting to be encoded, maybe more. There's a lot of scripts in the world. So let's look at some of the problems that we see in computing today. We don't have a lot of time to get into details about all of these, but I think being aware of each one of these is the first step. 
The first problem is no fonts. We have the question of, do we have too many fonts? That comes up a lot, right? Do we have too many fonts already? Do we really need more fonts? Well, for most of these scripts that we just looked at, we need at least one font. <laughs> like, <laughs> some of them have close to zero, or maybe a couple, maybe some hacked fonts that, because there's no support for Unicode or OpenType yet, so people hack their fonts somehow, ASCII encoding, they do all kinds of things, which really doesn't work so well, but you know, it's a way to do something better than nothing. But when we have no fonts, we get something like this. In this case, it's uh, boxes without the X or the question mark or there's lots of variations in the not diff glyph. Looking at pages like this is kind of interesting because it's little abstract box art. Here's another one, which is, this one I think is Noari script, I believe. You can see on the top there's some Devanagari text, which is also used for the Nepali languages, but like what I just mentioned with the Chakma, these people were forced to use the Devan Devanagari script. And so you see some of those letters, but not the Nawari. This one is, uh, well, it should be Unko, which is an African, West African script. And again, no font installed on my system. Here's a good search for, search for some Unko images. See the thumbnails have a little bit. There you can see the script that's in an image. But I see again at the top, question boxes, boxes, more boxes in the search. But I like this font here in the image. That's a good one. But we could look at boxes all day. So many boxes to be found on the internet. <laughs> but uh, that's the first problem, no fonts. But what about if we do have fonts and the user or the software doesn't quite get it right? This is one that you'll see a lot for Arabic. Arabic is probably the most widespread mangled text that I, I don't know if there's anything else that compares. It's really not that difficult to shape the text correctly, but users don't know. In this case, you can see at the top, and well, the bottom is upside down, but at the top, it's just individual letters. This one, you get the right direction. It should be right to left. That's correct, but Nothing is joined correctly, same at the bottom. So this tells me the software didn't do it correctly in the first place, and or the user didn't know what they were doing, they didn't check. That's the first problem is not checking. And I pulled a couple images from a great blog by uh, Ramsey Nasser in New York. He has a blog, nope, not Arabic, on Tumblr. <laughs> and people can send in all kinds of submissions like this you'll find every possible variation of how to mangle the Arabic script. On this, this particular poster, you see the French is good, the English is good, there's some Chinese on there, it's all good. But the Arabic text, well, it's Arabic letters, but you can't consider that Arabic text. It's just not put together. Here's a couple more simple examples. Welcome, one word. Very simple. They got the direction right again, but not the joining, so not, not Arabic. Same on the left. So this happens a lot. I got this in the mail for an uh, insurance company. They gave me this, you can call these numbers if you speak this language and you need help. Most of them are fine, like the Greek, Italian, anything with the Latin script, the Greek, the Russian, but here, we've got two examples. Arabic, again, just individual letters, not Arabic. And below that, the first one that I noticed, because I work on Khmer quite a bit, it's completely mangled because it's not shaped at all. If you don't know Khmer, this is one thing, or if you don't know any of these scripts, you don't have to yet, but now you're seeing them, so be aware. If you see this dotted circle, if you, yeah, it's hard, I don't have a 
pointer, but you can see dotted circle in the middle. The Khmer is the third one down. If you ever see a circle made out of dots, there's probably something wrong. If you ever see a plus sign below a letter, there's probably something wrong. In the Khmer, you can see the first one on the left, there's a plus sign below. That means that's not right. That means something here. That's the way the rendering system tells you this is wrong. So just be aware. That's the main point I want to make here is if you ever come across anything like this, oh, Arabic text, Khmer text, any other script that you aren't familiar with, it's easy to ask. That's really easy these days. We're so connected. You can tweet, you can post things on Instagram, you can get in touch with somebody who knows and make sure that you get it right so you don't end up with embarrassing things like these. And the last problem that I see all day, every day, lately, is we have the fonts because we're making the fonts. I've been working on the Noto, the Google Noto project for the last three years or so, where we're making fonts for everything in Unicode, which takes a lot of time and effort, but all the systems don't quite support them yet. So again, this one that we looked at works on some systems, doesn't work on other systems. So we need to get in touch with everybody. I talked to people at Microsoft, Apple, well, Ned is Ned here, I think. Ned from Apple is awesome. And we talk to them and say, hey, this is not working. And it's, a lot of times, it's because we've never seen this before. We've never seen the script. There's never been a font. So we need, we need more people. We need more eyes on this. We need more fonts to test with. But seeing something like this, we shouldn't have to have disclaimers for basic text. This guy, who's in Nepal, he's a proponent of Nepali scripts, like uh, the Nawari script. It's, that's his script. But he's been forced to use the Devanagari script. And he's trying really hard to design fonts and give calligraphy workshops and show people the scripts that they have, tied to their identity, tied to their history. And he was excited to tweet this. And first, we had the font. And he said, oh, great. How can I, how can I write with it? And I said, oh, well, we need a keyboard. So we made him a keyboard. And then he said, oh, great. And then he started typing. He tweeted, and he gets boxes. Oh, there's a bug up here. And that's not good. But we shouldn't have to have disclaimers like, oh, you can look at this text, but only if you're on a Mac with Firefox, and only if you're, it's Tuesday, and it's not raining. And it's, it's like, why, why should we have to do that? This is basic text. This is simple things like, hey, I'm tweeting. Or it's, there's nothing crazy going on. Here's another example of broken rendering, which I circled some of the problems on this page, but there's a, about 100 more. And this one, you also see the dotted circles on some of the letters. You see the plus sign on the second to last row. If you see those, again, if you ever see those, probably something's wrong. So check it out. And this one I thought we had all fixed last week. Again, we ran into a problem. And the last thing is, maybe some of you have seen this, just a simple sequence of characters in Telugu script and another Indian script. This one was crashing the iPhone, which sounds kind of crazy because it's just text, right? It's just simple text. This is basically like, typing, hi, hi mom, and it crashes your phone. Right? Like that shouldn't happen. And shaping text, it's not really that difficult if you think about it. Here's a simple diagram of one particular. <laughs> this, this one I could step any of you through pretty quickly because there's not that many little circles to show you. This one a little more complicated, but there are people who are doing this, people who know this, people who are taking care of these issues. So you don't have to worry about that unless you're excited about this, then come on in, join us. So what can you do? That's the first thing, be aware. 
Now you are aware. Now you've seen 143 different scripts. Maybe you hadn't seen them before. Maybe you had. But be aware. Be curious. Be interested. If you see something, say something. <laughs> Just get involved. We, we need more people looking at these things, doing more with these scripts, uh, designing, looking, being excited. So that's it. Thank you.